Well, I didn't quite get to it in enough time. It was actually snowing outside a few seconds ago. Too busy rewinding my tape. But uh, regardless, as you can see, there's actually snow that has stuck around. Or first snow that has stuck around for the winter of 2019-2020. But that is, of course, not the point of this video. Now, the point of this video is that right there. But we'll get to that in a second. First, what we're going to do is we're going to use this machine and its serial ATA Ultra Bay adapter to prepare a new solid state drive. That is to say, this little Kingston A400, 10 times faster, 240 gigabyte SSD for use in that Dell system. That Dell right now has a 120 gigabyte ADATA SU650 installed in it right now. And I want that SSD for another purpose. These blister packs are truly awful. And I wish that the person who invented those would get exiled to Siberia or something. But anyway, here's the SSD itself, which is really light. I swear they were making these things lighter and thinner every time I look at one of these. In fact, let me go get a standard hard drive and we'll see just how it compares. Now, as luck would have it, I don't know where my kitchen scale is right now, so I can't do a weight comparison, but I can do a size comparison with a regular hard drive. Look at that. Yeah, maybe it's not as thin as I thought it was. If you take the lid off of that mechanical drive, and if that lid were a solid piece, which it's not, if it were actually about that thick, these would be about the same size. Weight comparison, well, there is no comparison. This thing easily weighs, like, probably less than a quarter of what the hard drive weighs. So we'll go ahead and we'll put it in this little ultra bay here. And I can do that on video. We don't have to. See, it doesn't really matter how I do things. If I don't show this process, I get complaints because I don't. And if I do show this process, I get complaints because people don't want to see that and waste time. So whatever, I guess. Go ahead and we'll insert that. And we'll plug in the machine. I'm going to hook it up to the Ethernet. Not that I have to. I could do this over wireless. It is hooked up to my bedroom network. My bedroom wireless network. But I'm going to do it this way just because that is the easier way to do things. So I'll turn off the wireless. Power the machine on. This is the Lenovo ThinkPad T410. It's not really privy to this video. But it is still running the factory installed version of Windows 7. I think I've rebuilt it at least once um, by running the uh, recovery tool. But that said, it's still running the ADATA SX900 SSD, my first ever SSD and going strong. Alright, so I'm going to log in here and open up my backup program and we'll restore the uh, hard drive image. Alright, oh, that's amusing. It shows up as disk 1. Hmm. So let's see. NAS 3. I want L502X. And we're off to the races. Looks like that's not going to take very long at all. 15 minutes, maybe? 20 minutes maximum. A lot of people ask me why, for my monthly backups, I choose to take images of hard drives. Doesn't that take up a lot of space? Well, not really. And it allows me to do this with a machine that's completely unrelated to the system that I'm restoring to. I could just take a hard drive, plop it in here, grab an image, load it on, and put it in the machine. Simple as that. We're already at 10%. So this really isn't going to take that long at all. Successful image, and it didn't even take uh, 15 minutes. So at this point we can shut this thing down and uh, get our drive back and get the L502X up here and uh, change the SSD. Now, here is the Dell. Hello. So, it's actually very easy. You don't even need to remove any screws to do this. Or at least I certainly didn't. But you need to pry up carefully on this little bezel here, and it comes off. See, I like this design, and I don't like this design, because that's very fragile down there. 
but it reveals the hard drive here. Now I'm going to have to find a screwdriver that is going to actually work with these screws, which might be a little bit difficult because my screwdriver set is actually outside at the moment. I'm actually kind of amazed, but this screwdriver right here actually managed to work. So I've got the uh, old SSD out, and there's the new one. A little size compares in there. They are actually about the same size. And there it is installed in the bracket using very inappropriate screws. I don't have the right ones. So it is what it is, I guess. And there it is all nice and installed. Now all I need to do be very careful of this. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead power the system on. See if it actually happens to work. Which it should completely without failure. So I will, of course, go ahead and log in here. And of course, when you know, the first thing it asks, you must restart your computer to apply changes. I never did understand why that happened. And the other thing I'm not really understanding is why the wireless is constantly defaulting to off when I turn the system on. That's very strange. So I'm gonna go ahead and run updates on this thing. I don't know if I actually did that or not, but I think that's really going to do it for the video. But those that are wondering what this is, here you go. There are the specifications and the Windows Experience Index scores. Or, well, and I'll show you the Windows Experience Index scores. What you see is what you get. So we got the Intel video, as far as I know. Which is unfortunate. It might have NVIDIA. Mm, NVIDIA control panel, so it's definitely got the switchable graphics, at the very least. And GT525M. Anyway, I think that's pretty much it for the video, so thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And uh, this is CP666 signing off, and I hope to see you next time when we figure out what to do with this. Till then.